Hi, I'm Mark Powers for This Old House Magazine. Today we're going to layer crown molding onto a half beam to create the look of a large custom profile at a lower price. You'll start by marking the location for the half beam on the walls and ceiling. Cut a scrap block an eighth inch longer and wider than the inside dimensions of the beam. Use the block to mark the walls and ceiling near the ends of each wall, then snap a chalk line between each set of marks. Place painter's tape on the walls and ceiling where it won't be covered up as you work. Mark locations for the studs and joists on the tape. Place 2x2 two two cleats inside the chalk lines and screw the cleats into the frame. Wherever the cleats are parallel to the ceiling joists, use toggle anchors when attaching the cleats for a secure installation. Build the half beam by measuring each run and cutting the fascia and soffit boards to size. You'll miter the ends of the soffit boards across their widths and then bevel the fascia boards along their thicknesses to follow the angles of the soffits. On the back of each fascia, glue and nail a one by one nailing strip so it sits 7 eighths of an inch from the decorative edge. Add glue to the nailing strip and fascia and set the soffit on edge against the nailing strip. Nail through the soffit and into the strip to hold the half beam together. Attach a connecting block to the soffit so that it overhangs its mitered end. This will help you secure the adjoining beam later. Countersink pilot holes through the fascia and soffit. So we're gonna be coming up to the cleat and we're gonna sink it. Hoist the half beams into place and screw through the pilot holes and into the cleats. Connect beams at the corners by screwing through the soffits and into the connecting blocks. Wherever the beams run parallel to the joists, glue and nail angled backing blocks to the fascia and ceiling to create a nailing surface for the upper crown molding. For instructions on making the backing blocks, click on the links on this page. Map out the molding's installation. Outside corners are formed from two mitered ends, and inside corners are formed from a coped end abutting the face of a square cut piece of molding. Cut and miter the first length of molding, darken the edge of the profile, and back cut the end material with a coping saw. Set the molding in place and nail it to the ceiling and fascia board or to the backing blocks. But the coped end of the second run against the adjoining molding of the first run and nail it in place. To cut and install an outside corner, you'll use a scrap piece of molding to mark where the edges of the molding will land on the ceiling and fascia for the upper molding or the soffit and wall for the lower molding. Use these marks to draw a cut line on your molding, then miter the ends and install each piece, making sure the joint fits tightly. For long runs that need two lengths of molding, you'll cut a scarf joint to minimize the seam. Miter the ends of the pieces at parallel 30 degree angles. Nail through both pieces near the joint to secure them in place. Once all the molding is installed, caulk the nail holes, joints, and seams. Sand the assembly with a fine grit sanding sponge, and finally, add two coats of a semi-gloss paint to your new built-up crown molding.